I wanted to know if mountain biking grips are completely a personal preference or if there are enough objective differences between them to make an informed decision. So I bought eight of the most popular mountain biking grips under $35. We're gonna compare them and see if any of them stand out from the group. Let's jump in. We're gonna run each of these grips through a series of tests including vibration damping, holding strength when dry and wet, and grip durability. We're gonna be comparing the PNW Loam Grip, weighing in at 92 grams, measuring 133 millimeters in length and 30 millimeters in diameter. Mounts with a single-sided lock-on collar, manufactured in Taiwan. The Deity Knuckle Dusters, weighing in at 107 grams, measuring 135 millimeters in length and 31.4 millimeters in diameter. Mounts with a single-sided lock-on collar, also manufactured in Taiwan. DMR Death Grips, these are the thick version and soft compound, weighing in at 108 grams, measuring 135 millimeters in length and 31.2 millimeters in diameter. Diameter, mounts with a single-sided lock-on collar, also manufactured in Taiwan. The ODI Elite Pros, weighing in at 101 grams, measuring 129 millimeters in length and 31.7 millimeters in diameter. Mounts with a single-sided lock-on collar, manufactured in the USA. The Race Face Gripplers, the heaviest of the grips we're gonna test, weighing in at 149 grams, measuring 137 millimeters in length and 32.8 millimeters in diameter. Mounts with a dual-sided lock-on collar, which is what makes it the longest grip in the group, manufactured in Taiwan. The Chromag Format, weighing in at 97 grams, measuring 132 millimeters in length and 30.8 millimeters in diameter. Mounts with a single-sided lock-on collar. I believe it's manufactured in Taiwan, but I was unable to confirm. The Auri single-sided lock-on version two, weighing in at 121 grams, measuring 135 millimeters in length and 33 millimeters in diameter. The fattest of the grips we're going to test. Mounts with the single-sided lock-on collar, manufactured in the USA. And Ergon's GE1, weighing in at 113 grams, measuring 136 millimeters in length and 30.7 millimeters in diameter, mounts with a single-sided lock-on collar, manufactured in Taiwan. Just a quick note, these were actually supposed to be the Ergon GE1 Evo factories, but when I ordered them, I think I was sent old stock and I didn't realize it until after the production for this video had begun. For our first comparison, I've built a little rig to test the vibration dampening properties of each of these grips. I have a variable speed control rheostat going into a sander, which I've mounted to the front of a bike stand that I built out of some scrap wood I had in the garage. The bike stand is suspended on four springs to enable free movement. The front fork is also locked out to maximize the vibration traveling up and through the handlebars. In order to measure the vibration, I've built a little jig that will allow me to use my iPhone's accelerometer to measure the amount of vibration coming up through the bars. I have 15 pounds of downward force applied to each side of the bars to roughly simulate a rider and we'll be measuring the vibration on the Z axis. I'll conduct all of these tests by generating the vibration frequency of approximately 49 hertz. I'll level the accelerometer before each test I will ensure that the measurement jig is consistently placed seven eighths of an inch from the bar end for each grip. And I'll measure the Z axis vibration for each grip three times and take an average of those measurements for the final result. Let's begin with the PNW alone grips. After three tests, the PNW Loam Grips averaged the Z-axis acceleration of 0.174 meters per second squared. Let's take a look at the Deity Knuckle Dusters. The Deity Knuckle Dusters averaged a Z-axis acceleration of 0.190 meters per second squared. On to the DMR Death Grips. The DMR Death Grips averaged a Z-axis acceleration of 0.230 meters per second squared. Time to test the ODI Elite Pros. After three tests, the ODI Elite Pros averaged a Z-axis acceleration of 0.181 meters per second squared. Next up are the Race Face Gripplers. The Race Face Gripplers averaged a Z-axis acceleration of 0.255 meters per second squared. We'll now test the Chromag Formats. The Chromag Formats averaged a Z-axis acceleration of 0.198 meters per second squared. Next is the Auri Single Side Lock-On version two. After three tests, the Auri Single Side Lock-On version two averaged a Z-axis acceleration of 0.159 meters per second squared. Finally, we'll test the Ergon GE1. The Ergon GE1s averaged a Z-axis acceleration of 0.145 meters per second squared. Taking a look at the overall results, it appears that the top finishers were Ergon, Auri, and PNW, with Race Face rounding out the field. For our next comparison, we're going to try to determine which grips provide the most holding strength. The prime factors at play here are the grip compound, the texture, and ergonomic features. For this test, I've used some wire, foam, and tape to make four rods that will serve as fingers. 
I've secured them inside of this glove and attached a loop so I can pull it from the base. I've marked the glove at the second joint and will align the second joint to the top of the grip as I wrap the fingers around. I've attached the gloves to this force meter and the force meter has been attached to a 15 pound resistance band, which I run back through a pulley and attach to this makeshift crank. I'll generate a steady increase in force by winding the resistance band with this crank and I'll measure the max force that registered as the glove is pulled off of each grip. I'll conduct the test for each grip three times and then average the readings for a final result. The higher the average force, the more holding strength the grip provided when dry. First up, PNW Loam Grips. Test one, 11.3 pounds. Test two, 11.9 pounds, a slight improvement. Test three, 11.3 pounds, averaging 11.5 pounds of holding strength. Next, the DD Knuckle Dusters. Test one, 14.2 pounds. Test two, 15.4 pounds. Test three, 13.8 pounds, averaging 14.47 pounds, the strongest average we've had so far. Now testing the DMR Death Grips. Test one, 12.2 pounds. Test two, 13.4 pounds. Test three, 14 pounds for an average of 13.2 pounds. Next up, the ODI Elite Pros. Test one, 14.1 pounds. Test two, 15 pounds. Test three, 15.5 pounds. The strongest single measurement we've had so far for an average of 14.87 pounds of holding strength, taking the lead from Deity. Here's the race face gripplers. Test one, 8.4 pounds. Test two, 9.3 pounds. Test three, nine pounds for an average of 8.9 pounds. Test in the Chromag formats. Test one. 11.8 pounds. Test two. 11.7 pounds. Test three. 11.2 pounds. Consistent measurement all the way through for an average of 11.57 pounds of holding strength. The Aury single side lock on version two. Test one. 12.7 pounds. Test two. 12.3 pounds. Test three. 12.7 pounds for an average of 12.57 pounds of holding strength. Finally, the Ergon GE1, test one, 10.4 pounds, test two, 10.6 pounds, test three, 10.1 pounds, averaging 10.37 pounds of holding strength. Taking a look at the results, first place goes to ODI with an average holding strength of 14.87 pounds. The DDs are close second at 14.47 pounds and third goes to DMR averaging 13.2 pounds. Next, we're gonna do a wet holding strength test. In this comparison, I'm gonna be using the same testing rig and procedure, except for in this round, I'm gonna be keeping the gloves soaked in a bucket of water and I'm gonna spray the grip down between each test. I'll wait about 30 seconds for the grip and glove to shed any excess water and then we'll run the test three times. Starting with the PNW loan grips. Test one, 8.8 .8 pounds. Test two, 9.7 pounds. Test three, 9.9 .9 pounds for an average of 9.47 pounds of holding strength when wet. Now testing the Deity knuckle dusters. Test one, 10.2 pounds. Test two, 10.8 pounds. Test three, 10.5 pounds, averaging 10.5 pounds, just edging out PNW, but about 27% lower holding strength than when dry. Next up, the DMR death grips. Test one, 9.8 pounds. Test two, 9.5 pounds. Test three, also 9.5 pounds, averaging 9.6 pounds, which is also 27% lower holding strength than when dry. Here are the ODI Elite Pros. Test one, 11.4 pounds. Test two, 11.6 pounds. Test three, 
12.8 pounds, making it the strongest single measurement so far in the wet test. Averaging 11.93 pounds of holding strength, 20% lower than when in the dry test, but our highest score in the wet test so far. Here's the race face gripplers. Test one, 7.5 pounds. Test two, 8.1 pounds. Test three, 7.9 pounds for an average of 7.83 pounds. Next, the Chromag formats. Test one, 10.7 pounds. Test two, 11.3 pounds. Test three, 11.5 pounds. Consistent measurements all the way through, averaging 11.17 pounds of holding strength and incredibly only a 3% drop in performance than when dry. Not enough to take the lead on this test, but it is enough to put it in second place. Now the Aury single side lock-on version two. Test one, 10.5 pounds. Test two, 11.5 pounds. And test three, 10.5 pounds. Another consistent round of measurements averaging 10.83 pounds of holding strength when wet. Finally, the Ergon GE1s. Test one, 9.4 pounds. Test two, 10.1 pounds. And test three, 9.3 pounds. Averaging 9.6 pounds of holding strength, losing only 7% of its holding strength when wet. Taking a look at the results, first place goes to ODI with an average holding strength of 11.93 pounds, then Chromag, at 11.17 pounds, and third place goes to Auri, averaging 10.83 pounds. In order to compare grip durability, I built a test rig to simulate a tree strike. The rig is essentially a drop tower that will guide an 8.4 pound landscaping timber down a track to strike each grip at approximately a 20 degree angle. I have a bike bar and stem mounted to a central pivot which allows them to rotate freely and I've added 15 pounds of weight to the outside end of the bar to apply upward force on the end of the bar where I'll be mounting the grips. I'll drop a timber from around six feet high three times and then we'll inspect each grip for damage. I've also sampled each grip with a shore A durometer three times to get an average reading and I'll share that data to compare with what's been provided by the manufacturer. For the PNWs, I get an average durometer reading of 25.8, and after three simulated tree strikes, the grip sustained minor damage. I am rating the performance in this test as a B. For the deities, I get an average durometer reading of 25.2, and after three simulated tree strikes, the grip sustained minor damage. I am rating the performance in this test as a B. For the DMRs, I get an average durometer reading of 26.8, and after three simulated tree strikes, the grip sustained a moderate amount of damage. I am rating the performance in this test as a C. For the ODIs, I get an average durometer reading of 26, and after three simulated tree strikes, the grip sustained minor damage. I am rating the performance in this test as a B. For the race faces, I get an average durometer reading of 32.7, and after three simulated tree strikes, the grip sustained a moderate amount of damage. I am rating the performance in this test as a C. For the Chromags, I get an average durometer reading of 26.2, and after three simulated tree strikes, the grip sustained no discernible damage, and I'm rating the performance in this test as an A. For the Auries, I get an average durometer reading of 23.8, and after three simulated tree strikes, the grip sustained minor damage. I am rating the performance in this test as a B. Finally, for the Ergons, I get an average durometer reading of 25.7, and after three simulated tree strikes, the grip sustained no discernible damage. I am rating the performance in this test as an A. Taking a look at the overall results, it appears that the Chromags and the Ergons held up the best in this test. For our second durability comparison and our final set of tests, I'm going to simulate a bike drop onto the bar end. I've measured the amount of weight on my bike's handlebar end when it's laying on its side, and I've added roughly the same amount of weight to a drop rig that I just assembled. We'll drop each grip and inspect the damage. The PNWs sustained moderate damage and scored a C. The Deities only sustained cosmetic damage and scored an A. The DMR sustained moderate damage and scored a C. The ODIs sustained minor damage and scored a B. The Race Faces only sustained cosmetic damage and scored an A. The Chromag sustained moderate damage and scored a C. The Auries sustained moderate damage and also scored a C. The Ergons only sustained cosmetic damage and scored an A. Okay. The results show that the deities, race faces, and ergons performed the best in this set of tests. The grips that scored the best across all tests combined are the ODI Elite Pros. Second place is a tie between the Deity Knuckle Dusters and the Auri Single Sided Lock On Version 2s. And third place goes to Ergon. Now, if you prioritize vibration damping, 
you might want to take a look at the Ergons of the Auris. If you prioritize holding strength and ride in dry conditions, check out the ODIs, Deities, and the DMRs. If you ride in a lot of wet conditions, you may want to check out the ODIs or the Chromags. And if you're like me, frequently hitting trees to the ground, the Ergons are a safe bet. Personally, I'm going to prioritize vibration damping and durability, and the Ergons are going to be my next set of grips. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you all can get out and enjoy the trails. We'll see you next time. Thanks.